you know, you have a unique story. And what I love about, you know, your faith story is that as you transition from, you know, maybe, maybe finding some doubts along the way and not being sure of your faith or not walking in it the way that you have as a mature older woman, it's like, there's times in our adolescence when we're unsure or we're, we go back on things or we ask God, are you even really there? Cause it, I can't feel your presence. Right. Um, yeah. but I love how, you know, through your book and through your story, you're able to display what God has done in your life. How has that affected your relationship with him and, and his faithfulness? How has your faith grown? Oh gosh. I, I would say like, um, two really good examples of that. Cause I think it's good to first have that context of like, well, gosh, like why was she questioning God? Um, you know, when I was little, when I was like five, I feel, I just feel like someone who God started talking to at a very young age. I feel like before anyone at church ever, like before I was even really going to church very much before anybody had ever told me who God should be, I knew this God as a best friend. I just knew this God. And he was the God who would come and draw close enough to leave fog marks on the glass. I would talk to him through the window at night. You know, it's just, he felt like a friend. And there's this part in Dirt where I talk about after he was in the stars, he started meeting me in the daylight hours. And then he was everywhere. He was in the color of the grass down to the very pigment, the green of the grass down to the very pigment. He was in the bird stepping into flight, free of the tether of their branches. He was in the sun on your face, how you could still close your eyes and feel that fire. He was in the cold, hard ground, how once you got your hands in it and felt it break up no matter how long it had been you still couldn't forget how it felt he was color and freedom and fire and dirt and that was how I started with him and then you get older and you start to become aware of what feels like is lacking or missing in your story you start to see other people's stories other people's blessings and you start to go why not me God why am I in this trailer and my friend is in this beautiful home why, you know, do I have these you know, hand-me-down clothes or whatever the case is, and they have brand new clothes? Why, you know, why is it easy for them? Why are their parents together? Whatever the case may be. And so I started when I was like, you know, in the 12-year-old range to 15-year-old range, really starting to feel like God had his favorites and we clearly weren't it. And he was the God who could go along and let that house be fine and that house be fine and then strike that house down without any warning. He was indifferent to our struggles that's how I started to feel about him. And I will say that as a person who can still is back at that place of feeling like God is drawn close enough to leave fog marks on the glass in the windows, God is not afraid of those times when we feel like he's far away. He's not afraid of our tears. He's not afraid of our anger. He just wants us to have that conversation. And, you know, I think there was a big part of my brain who thought I hit my quota of hard things growing up. And as soon as I got out and graduated law school and met Justin and got married, that was going to be the end. Like, I'm good on the struggle. And we have now been trying to start a family for six and a half years. And I can tell you there have been many times when I have felt, you know, walking on the seawall outside our house salty tears running down my face, salty water whipping in the wind, you know, against my face where you can't tell which is which, is it ocean or is it tears? I have felt many times through that journey, especially in the first three years, you've left us again. You know, you've, you've drawn away again. You had your favorites and we weren't it. Why am I waiting on something that nobody else is? You know, it feels like nobody else is. And uh, what's cool about that, you know, in a, in a really weird way to use the word cool is that when you have already gone through a season of being able to be mad at God or upset with God or cry to God and you realize he didn't turn away from you that trust kind of gets baked in a little bit you you understand that you can have times where you're like even if this never happens I still choose you God but I can still hurt in the meantime and you see those tears and you are not indifferent to them and this pain, this hard part of the story, doesn't. it's not that it doesn't break your heart, it's just that you know what you're doing. Just like you knew what you were doing with that first struggle and how I saw that turn out, I can trust you again. And so one of my favorite quotes I ever heard, Audrey Roloff said it, a mentor of hers said it to her, she says, God's past faithfulness demands our present trust. And so to answer your question in a very roundabout way is I feel like I have in this weird way, I am the girl in the trailer and the girl after in that I have this childlike friendship, best friendship relationship with God while also having the spiritual maturity of I have had the experience to know that his past faithfulness 
demands my present trust. Mm, amen. Wow. Thank you so much for that. Yeah. Wow. It is beautiful. 